when you're looking at something like obstructive sleep apnea or breathing disorders, because there are so many different factors that really can affect those problems, snoring can be affected by multiple different things. It really behooves the patient to take a very comprehensive and integrative approach to really seek out the expertise of a specialist that not only is an ear, nose, and throat specialist, but also has an integrative approach to these disorders. For example, it's not uncommon for patients to come to a doctor's office, internal medicine doctor, for example, or family practitioner, and if they state that they have snoring or that they have obstructive sleep apnea, in many cases, these patients will end up being led to a laboratory testing to identify whether they have obstructive sleep apnea for real. And if in fact that's found, in many cases, these, these doctors are recommending a kind of a consistent approach for every patient, which is CPAP. It's a continuous positive pressure assisted machine. And that is the only thing that's recommended because that's all they know that can be made available to the patient. Um, in many cases, the patients don't like that machine. They don't enjoy having a mask worn during the middle of the night for every night. It's socially displeasing. It is claustrophobic for many patients. And many, many patients become extremely irritated and frustrated with that single approach, which seems to be the most commonly recommended approach for most patients. Um, in some cases, the doctors are reluctant to recommend the patients to seek anything further because they fear that the only thing that's available out there is a more extensive procedure of surgery called UPP, uvulopatal pharyngoplasty, which we know is not for everybody either. That is a procedure that's much more extensive than most patients require. So when patients come in to see us, what we're looking for is a patient that is integratively minded, who really understands that it really is their responsibility to allow for a comprehensive approach to these problems. It's not the same shoe fits every patient. Every patient has the unique components contributing to the problem of snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. What we do is we take a look at the patient holistically and look at every component that is affecting their sleep pattern problem. We look at the nasal deformity problems, if any, anatomy of the inside of the nose. We look at the back of the throat anatomy. We look at the functionality of the palate, of the soft palate. We take a look at the base of the tongue. And we even take a look at hormonal disturbances, for example. Take a look at allergy problems that might be affecting the nasal congestion. So between the allergy problem evaluation and treatment and the anatomic approach um, and treatment for each of the individual components that may be causing the problem and the hormonal disturbances that may in fact be leading to those imbalances which lead to sleep disturbances, we can get the best results for the patient. In many cases, insurance companies are not caught up yet with a holistic integrative approach to the care of patients. Uh, many of the techniques that insurance companies will pay for and have paid for many years are in fact outdated. And one of the problems is that if the patient leaves all of their health care up to an insurance company to decide whether or not they should or should not have a particular procedure, in many cases they're going to miss out on some of the more latest modern techniques and easier techniques to be able to resolve a lot of these issues. For example, the pillar technique, which is a simple procedure and might take 15-20 minutes, is not yet covered by many insurance companies, yet they will cover for the more extensive and often unnecessary procedures, including uvulopalatal pharyngoplasty, where we have to cut out an enormous amount of tissue in the back of the throat to be able to give the patient more room for breathing. Um, that kind of procedure, really, which is covered by insurance, is often not necessary. And what we're hoping for is that with enough education of the insurance companies and the patients, and the patients really um, going to their insurance companies and demanding that the insurance companies cover these procedures, we hope that they'll eventually cover the pillar procedure, which really has revolutionized the way that we approach obstructive sleep apnea and snoring. So we really want the patients to be able to take a, a, a strong hand in making sure that they can get these things covered wherever they possibly can by the insurance companies. In the end, it's up to the patient to take care of themselves. I didn't know I had it because the way I was experiencing sleep apnea was I just roll over all night. You don't know that you're actually not breathing. And each time that happens, it's a little jolt to the heart. Well, over time as you age, that really challenges the health of your heart. So um, Dr. Rubenstein may be aware of all this and uh, we solved the problem and I sleep soundly now. Immediately after surgery, it was a problem for me. You know, I couldn't smell things, I couldn't breathe freely um, and I wasn't sleeping well. 
you know, what would that do to anybody? And those things are now out of my way.